Florida Congressman Michael Waltz joins us now to react. Uh, we've been talking about this all morning. First of all, welcome. Yeah, thank uh, it's you. It's so great to have you here at the Speedway. Welcome to Daytona. I Daytona know. 500. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, but so troubling, so many things. We were just talking off, off camera here. Uh, we'll, start, we'll start with this, of course. Yeah. What do they know? I mean, you're on Armed Services, Intel. You're on Foreign Relations Committee. We had Senator Rick Scott. He says, I don't know anything more than you will and yeah. Pete. Um, what do you know? And is this possible that our representatives don't know anything? Yeah, look, they they called off the search. We have to understand that we had the Alaska National Guard up there in the Arctic Ocean at negative 20 temperatures. I don't think we're ever going to get any of that debris. However, the Northern Illinois Bottleneck Balloon Brigade has declared one of their hundred-dollar balloons missing. So, so is, it I, the, so, so is this that it, it's embarrassing to say we shot down a you know hundred-dollar balloon? We didn't shoot down the spy craft until after the spying was done, and then we went trigger happy. Uh, and are shooting down Boy Scout balloons or what have you. And I still don't, uh, from an oversight perspective, understand what our shoot down criteria are. And Chinese propaganda are blasting this all over the world. We told you America was on the decline. We're the preeminent power. They can't even defend against a balloon. I mean, you were in the military. Who would make that call? I mean, where does that call come from to shoot that balloon down, whatever it is that they shot? That well, that would, go up to the, that would go up to the president. The command responsible for defending our airspace has not shot anything down in its 65-year existence. And now we have four in, uh, in the span of a week. Yeah, it is embarrassing. I do want to talk a little bit about um, about that toxic cloud situation. I mean, what do you make of the fact that you know we're sending? I know that you're you know I di we you yeah. and I differ on on the Ukraine situation. Yeah. Um, you say we should be there. I'm not sure if it's in America's interest at well, all. Well, I say that but, by providing the things that prevents us from being there, right. the Soviets. I mean, if the Russians drag us in, yeah, but, yeah. I, <laughs> There's a lot of things that could have happened sure. before the war started. We won't get into Absolutely. that. Absolutely. 100% agree. Yeah. yeah. And, and we could have helped with some peace negotiations. But that yes. that aside, there's a lot of money going to Ukraine. Right. Um, and our federal government has failed this town, this poor town in Ohio. It's a failure of leadership. You know, you learn and you know in the military and business, when you have a crisis in your business, you have a crisis in your unit around the world, as the leader, as the commander, you show up to the scene. Amen. And talk to the troops, talk to the people affected, share the risk. Why isn't Pete Buttigieg breathing that air, drinking that water, yeah. and sharing what he's saying is perfectly fine yeah. with uh, with his constituents, it's with the American people? It's such a great point. I'd love to see Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg and everybody at the EPA who's telling those people it's fine to go down there and drink that water and, and shower in the down, showers that they say right. are burning their skin. Stay in the hotels, breathe Amen. the air. Absolutely. It's a failure of leadership. We need to get to another topic. Yeah. So when President... Uh, Trump was elected. Within months, we got rid of ISIS, something that we didn't think could happen in the how many years we had the Obama administration. That's right. ISIS is back? ISIS is back. It is a simmering uh, powder keg in the Middle East right now. There are tens of thousands of ISIS fighters in these in these prison camps that are being guarded by the Kurds, and they are turning into a recruitment. How did this happen? Well, it, it is, it's left over. Nobody wants to take them back, uh, and they are recruiting inside. They are launching attacks outside of these camps. Thank God for our special operators that are still there. And look, for everybody who says just bring the troops home, well, we have to have the helicopters there, the drones there, and we just had a raid uh, a few nights ago where we had four of our special operators wounded, including a service dog, but they took out yet another ISIS commander. I want to keep them on their back feet over there yeah. rather than waiting till they come home over here. Uh, but this problem hasn't gone away. The terrorists didn't get the memo from Biden saying the war on terrorism is over because he wished it was over. No, oh, well, the Taliban just inherited a lot of our weapons. That's um, right. How many millions of dollars? Billions. Billions of, of dollars. dollars billions of, our of weapons, dollars. And the intelligence community is blinking red that ISIS and al-Qaeda are rebuilding in Afghanistan. And now they have our weapons and a Taliban-run government to work with. I just don't know, Congressman, how many more fronts domestically and in, you know, internationally we can be failing. This is what happens when you project weakness. But you won't see that projected here at the Daytona 500. There won't no. be any kneeling no. at this race. No, we're already hearing the sound of freedom all the <laughs> That's right. Long. It's the last sound the terrorists ever hear are the sound of those jets. Amen to that. Really quick predictions on the Daytona 500? Well, look. Yeah, you know, Bubba Wallace never won one, come in second. Wouldn't mind seeing that, but I'm going to go with, with Vegas on this one and uh, Denny Hamlin. All right, Denny Hamlin it is. Thank All you, right. Congressman Waltz. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks All for right. joining us. Thank you. God bless.